hey guys welcome back to a new tutorial and probably one of my most favorite tool which I've created yet so I'll just give you all a demonstration let's say you have this and I have my mesh already assigned so I can just let's say add 10 columns give it an offset in Z probably like 50 and give it an offset in Y and there you go you have your stars created and probably you can and it's easily customizable you can increase the offset probably bring back X a bit you can even have a slanted slide let's say like a minus 30 something like this if that suits you or let's say we have this another mesh again you can change the mesh however you want and again i've added seven columns i'll give it an offset of 40 and z offset of three and let's go ahead and add 10 columns and give that an offset of 10 as well probably 20 22 and yeah you now have an entire set of roofs you can just rotate it and it is relative offset so rotation won't matter it will now rotate according to your object how it's rotated so yeah so now you have your roofs and just decrease the offset a bit only 23 and yeah perfect yeah. and it's super fast you can customize it really well and it's not just limited to these two demonstration which I showed you can make your tiles you can make your let's say walls the possibilities are endless so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video do leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel it helps a lot uh, thank you So for this demonstration, I have prepared these two assets. Please ignore the textures on it. Uh, it's a wooden, like a plank thing and another something like this. But with this tool, you can use it to create anything you want, like a floor, like a ceiling tile, floor tile, walls, gates, etc. So the possibility is endless. So let's begin first thing I want to do is as usual create a new blueprint class type actor I'll name this BP underscore mesh builder you can name it as you want so open that up yeah so let's begin so you don't want to add anything over here we will directly go and hop on to the construction script and do all our magic over there the first thing I want to do is add a sequence since we will be doing multiple stuff or else you can create multiple functions uh, uh, for this demonstration I prefer a sequence so first thing we want to do is just instantiate it in a row or anything so any time we want to do that you will always need a loop if you want to do something multiple times so for loop first index will be 0 and the so last index will be by how many times you want to instantiate the object so you just so we want that to be accessible via editor so just promote it to a variable we will name it let's say number number of duplicate or uh, no I'll say columns for now just to keep it simple and compile and make it public and yeah from there next thing we want to do is create a mesh so add static mesh component and don't do anything over here yet uh, let's go ahead and set this in the editor so once you're done with that you want to set your static mesh and 
in your new mesh again promote it to the variable since we want to edit it from the editor this I'll name it your mesh okay and from there what you want to do is drag from the return value and set relative location and rotation also if you want different materials you can also drag this and do set material and convert that to a variable as well but for now since I have only one material I don't need that so yeah so now let's go ahead and create this location magic so first thing I want to do is from the new location you want to make a vector so we will be doing using pretty basic logic here so the first index will always be in 0 0 0 and everything from there we will add an offset to it so just do index multiply and make this a float duplicate it and you need it to do three times make this a float as well sorry for that sound make this a float as well and connect this to the x y and z so basically these are our offsets so every index it will multiply it by that so go ahead right click promote to variable i'll name this x offset right click promote to variable this will be my y offset and lastly this will be my z offset compile and save and let's test it out so i'll drag my actor inside and i'll first yeah i'll first assign the mesh so you see that mesh is there now we want let's say five columns oh okay one thing we forgot is make these variables also public so they can be edited from outside okay so we want five columns let's add an x offset i'll say 40 and there you see it has duplicated that now let's add a z offset and see how it looks so probably two and there you go we already have our tiling pretty cool and probably increase the so the bit more you can also add some y offset i don't think it will work in this case yeah i'll keep that zero i will duplicate this and let's add our star tile there you go i think you have to increase the z offset in this i'll do something like 20 maybe 30 x offset probably 40 and yeah see you have something like your stairs now you can just add as many columns as you want and it will work perfectly well there you go so yes we are not done yet uh, let's add something so that we can add more rows to this so again come inside your construction script uh, actually take this and just comment it columns okay so now you what you want to do is same thing add another for loop this time it will be your rows so actually we want the columns to be same even if when we increase the rows so for that let's again promote the last index to a variable name it rows uh, 
So what I like to do is in every blueprint add categories. So if you just go ahead and rename the default, it will add it to a separate category. So I'll add all the variables we just created to a category named column. So whenever you're creating something for editor, this is really helpful. And also for the rows, I'll add it to the rows category. Okay, make this public. And from this loop body, you want to add another loop. So let's say we have two rows, but the columns should remain the same. So columns. And for this, the last index will be columns. And from here, what you can do is copy all of these. Co even copy the make vector. And yeah, loop. So what you want to do next is uh, the X and Z will remain the same. So you can again copy, co copy these two values connect to X and Z and you will multiply it from the columns index index of the column the Y however uh, what we can do is mm, let's see we can take the index of the row and multiply it but that may cause some problems uh, let's try anyway let's uh, multiply this and convert this to a float and convert this to a variable I'll name this row offset make it public and category will be rows and connect this to the Y now let's see so you have this I'll add let's say two rows and offset of five okay 10 probably 20 as you can see 25 z offset everything else remains the same yeah perfect exactly how we need so you can now increase the columns let's say to 7 the rows to probably 10 and yeah it will work perfectly well great it turned out great and yeah and actually I, what I thought it wouldn't work was if I add a Y offset here yeah this is what I meant so let's say the rows is 0 you can see that is the Y it doesn't add a Y offset to the column let's quickly fix that open up your construction script okay so from this uh, what you want to do is also add let's try uh, multiply this by your y offset and add these two values I'm sorry it's a little bit messy over here just fix that okay and do an add node let's try if this works I'm not pretty sure but yeah we'll find out together as you can see now let's add a row perfect it was exactly how we want so yeah let's add some roads to this uh, let's say five rows uh, we'll give it offset 100 probably 500 yeah it works perfectly well having a y offset perfect and yeah i hope you all enjoyed this video let me know what you all created using this tool and please subscribe i'm trying to hit a goal over here 
and yeah thanks for all the support till now have a great day